This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Bob Yandian Ministries. Coming up on this episode of Student of the Word. The greatness of the Christian life is this. When you hear the Word of God, you benefit yourself. But when you become a doer of the Word of God, you benefit others around you, and your life becomes pleasing to God. Notice this. God didn't say over here, Jesus, when he was born in the manger, well, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. No, it's when he reached 30 years old and he was baptized in the river Jordan and God made a pronouncement of the 30 years up until that point. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and something to take notes with and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. I've been teaching on the subject of a return to the Word of God. We've taken up three days and today we're going to get into the subject of the Word of God and obedience. If you want to turn to Matthew chapter 7, you can. We're going to take a look at verses 24 through 27. I just want to make a reminder to you also that we have a uh, a free website called ministersclub.com. And it's a place you can go and get notes, download notes and all types of things about sermons. There's free material on there, but also the notes for these particular lessons that I'm teaching on television is available there if you'd like to go there. So that's ministersclub.com. I know it's going to be a blessing for you. Matthew chapter 7. Let's take a look at 24 through 27. And uh, here in this verse of scripture, Jesus is just finishing the Sermon on the Mount. He says, so whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man. This is an admonition to believers. The admonition to unbelievers came just before this, of which road will you take, which gate will you go in, the wide road that leads to destruction, the narrow road that leads to eternal life, the narrow gate, the wide gate. But those who choose the narrow road, just you and Jesus on that road, it says, I'll liken him to a wise man when you hear and you start to do them. So I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock and the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, beat upon that house and it did not fall for it was built on a rock. And everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, this is a foolish Christian, not a foolish sinner. And everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Today we're taking up the subject of the word of God and obedience that this is basically a doer of the word of God. Whenever you hear the word of God, you study the word of God, it's preached to you, all the different ways it comes to you, and then you begin to act on it. It says here, I'll liken this man to a wise man, a wise Christian who built upon a rock. I want you to notice he said, those who do not do these sayings build on sand. And to be honest with you, sand is small rocks. It's just a rock broken down into tiny fragments. And that's oftentimes the problem we have as Christians. We built our life on fragments of scriptures. We take one little, or we take an entire verse and pull it out, but we don't look at it in context nor do we compare it to other scriptures. And so again, it says we're all going to face the storms of life. The winds come, the the floods come, the rains descend on the one built on a a house on a rock, as well as the one that builds it on sand. We're all going to face difficult times, but the one that's built on the rock will remain. It will not fall. And that's why we have some Christians who come through trials, others who do not. I've heard this said before, you know, that we're all going to go through troubles and trials. And it's really the trouble that that we go through that helps build our character. No, it's not. Trouble doesn't build your character. If trouble built character, then every Christian would have character. And it's the trouble that causes us to go to the Word of God. It's the Word of God in the trial that makes us strong. Let's talk about obedience and how we honor the Lord. Again, obedience honors the Lord. Obedience is different than good works. Good works are things we should be involved in, but obedience is different. Good works are done in front of other people as a witness to them, but obedience is what you do when you're alone, only seen by God. This is more than just your outward action. This comes back to your character. Character is developed and built upon what we would call the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is not the powerful gifts of the Spirit. That's something else. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and long-suffering, gentleness toward other people. We go down the list of the nine that are mentioned there 
under the fruit of the Spirit. And this again builds character. Those ministers who last are those who build their ministry on character rather than on gifts. And even your gifts should be built upon your character. Obedience is not just joining the church or the choir or helping in the church. That again is things you do in front of other people. It's more than witnessing or giving money in the offering. This is also done in front of other people. None of these things should be done to earn God's blessing. First Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22 says this, Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken is better than the fat of rams. You're not gonna get to heaven and receive so many rewards just for witnessing to other people. There is rewards for that. But honestly, what the Lord is looking for is a person of character. Let's put it this way. You can witness to other people, but your character speaks all the time. You can witness to people and talk to them at that moment, but, with, but again, your character is there at all times. We should serve God from a strong hunger or a desire to do his will. You know what the bottom line of the Christian life is? Not that you can please people, but you can please God. And sometimes you'll please people, sometimes you won't. Pastors are often trying to please their people. But the point of it is, is God pleased with your ministry? And he's pleased with your ministry when you are obedient to him. Jesus even at times spoke to large crowds. There was a large crowd that followed him one time and he simply spoke a point to them. He says, if you follow after me, he says, we're gonna have to do some things. He said, if you follow after me, he says, I want you to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Now, the disciples didn't even know what that meant, but the crowd just suddenly dispersed and went. The deeper you go with God, the more you're gonna have people begin to peel off. The further you go in the word of God as a minister, you can find people leaving the church or because they'd simply come to the point they don't want to be challenged in their Christian life. They enjoy being comfortable. And really there's a point to it that the Christian life is not always comfortable. There's moments of comfort, but the rest of it comes where we become prodded by God to keep on serving him. And that's where it comes back to obedience. Psalm 119 verse 155 says this, salvation is far from the wicked for they do not seek your statutes. This is what Christians ought to be doing. You know, from the wicked that don't know the Lord, they don't even want to get involved in, in what God wants them to do. But the point of it is, is when we come in obedience to God in the first place, the first place that we come to the Lord in obedience is the fact we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And we know that God and keeping his commandments are all tied together. Knowing God is the first thing that happens to us. We receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. But from that time on, he gives us two things to help us keep his commandments. Number one is the word of God. And number two is the power of the Holy Spirit. If we honor his word, then we can obey him. It says, again, if I, if the, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But that means exactly the opposite. If I do not regard iniquity, I lo don't let it into my life, then God will hear my prayers. There is simply obedience to him. I hide his word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Why do I hide his word in my heart? I don't want to hurt God. You know, there's people often said, you know, well, you know, I wasn't around my wife, so I thought it'd be okay to go to bed with this woman. This woman seduced me or I seduced her and my wife wasn't around. She'll never know. The point of it is, is you know, you know, and the point of it is also is why would you want to betray your wife? In other words, there is a faithfulness and a dedication to her when you're not around her. The same also goes of the wife toward the husband. But we often say, well, no one was around when I sinned. Well, God was around. His presence is always there. And really, why should I want to do that? Because I don't want to hurt the heart of God. First John chapter two and verse four says this, he who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. He's saying here again to say that I know God, I love God and all that, and I want to keep his commandments, but you don't keep his commandments. You're a liar and the truth isn't in you. Now you may be a believer, but the truth is not in you or you're not acting on the truth that you know. Who we say we are and what we do are tied together. Luke chapter six and verse 46 says this, why do you call me Lord and do not do the things that I say? It comes back to this in the word of God. Obedience is really not an option in the Christian life. God wants us to be obedient to him. We're not just to come to church and receive the word, then do nothing. And yet churches are filled with them. I pastored for years and came to this conclusion one day about the four types of ground found in Mark chapter four. There's hard ground, stony ground, thorny ground, and good ground. And of the good ground, it produces 30, 60, and 100 fold. It's the only one of the four grounds that says this, they produce fruit. 
You know what producing fruit is? According to the book of John chapter 15, fruit bearing is a type of a disciple. In other words, three of the four types of ground did not even reach the point of becoming a disciple. Are they believers? Yes. But were they disciples? No, because when certain problems came in their life, they peeled off and went somewhere else. And those with hard ground, that come to church, they don't even listen to the word of God. Oftentimes I've said, open your Bible and somebody goes to sleep. They didn't care about the word. They were at church for some other reason. Stony ground has problems in their life. Thorny grounds has personal problems, but it's those that pass through all of those begin to weed out the thorns and dig up the, the rocks under the ground are the ones that progress and begin to get into becoming a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Once you reach discipleship, you start with 30 fold. Then you keep increasing and increasing even up to a hundred fold. But again, it it comes back to it. Some three quarters of a congregation never reach the point of becoming a disciple. God wants us to become disciples. What is the con what is the concept of a disciple? Someone who hears the word and obeys it. Obedience is no option in the word of God. Again, we're not just to come to church and receive the word and do nothing. The blessings come from being obedient to the promises of God. Matthew chapter seven, verse 24 through 27 is the verse we just started with. And I'm reemphasizing that verse of scripture of being a hearer of the word and not and a doer also. Both of them, James chapter one and verse 22 says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. So many people hear the word of God, even make notes about it, might even go home and categorize those notes, but they don't act on it. The greatness of the Christian life is this. When you hear the word of God, you benefit yourself, but when you become a doer of the word of God, you benefit others around you and your life becomes pleasing to God. Notice this, God didn't say over here, Jesus, when he was born in the manger, well, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. No, it's when he reached 30 years old and he was baptized in the river Jordan and God made a pronouncement of the 30 years up until that point. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Also on the Mount of Transfiguration, when Jesus was there with his disciples and Peter interrupted him, God told Peter, he said, Peter, listen to him. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Twice in Jesus' ministry, it was based on obedience to do what God asked him to do. And then when Jesus went to the cross, that was the greatest act of him being obedient to the will of God. So Luke chapter 12 tells us, and we'll get more into this when we come back from the break, is the servant who knows his Lord's will prepares himself. And so we're gonna talk about that when we come back. Meanwhile, I just wanna to talk to you also about becoming a partner with me. Just have a little bit of time before the break, but I just want to thank you for being a partner. If you're not a partner with me, if you enjoy the word of God, why don't you contribute to it? Because you know what? Somebody contributed so you could hear it. This broadcast today is not only brought about by God's power, but also people joining me in fellowship, people joining me in heart, and joining me in giving finances, because these broadcasts are literally, they cost money. You say, yeah, but the gospel's free. Yes, it is, but it costs money to get it there. Everything's free. Vegetables come out of the ground, it's free. Fruit grows on trees, it's free. Cows grow, you know, eat the grass and grow up, that's all free. But actually slaughtering it, bringing it, getting it to your table takes money. And so, so is the gospel free, but bringing it to people takes money. Would you join me in becoming a partner? In essence, saying thank you to whoever gave so I could hear it. I wanna be faithful to give so someone else can hear it. And it just keeps going on and on and on. Go to my website, bobyandian.com. You'll find a place where you can become a partner with me in this ministry. I'll be so glad thanking you in advance. I'll see you right after the break. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Without the Word of God, our lives would be unstable and without direction. There would be no hope for believers or, for that matter, the entire world. In this seven-part series, Pastor Bob Yandian emphasizes and explains the vital necessity of the Word of God in the life of every believer. Sermon titles include A More Sure Word of Prophecy, The Inspiration of the Holy Spirit, God's Reputation, The Wisdom of God's Word, The Merchandise of Wisdom, Wisdom, Riches, and Honor, and Jesus, Our Wisdom. To order Importance of the Word, visit our website at bobyandian.com. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, 
this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. Let's recover some of those verses that came just before the break. 1 John 2, 4, he who says, I know him, I'm born again, and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Notice it didn't say Jesus is a name, the Holy Spirit's not in him. It says the truth is not in him. That's the word of God. Luke 6 and verse 46, Jesus said, why do you call me Lord and do not do the things that I say? Again, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and you adhere to the word of God, why aren't you obedient to the word of God? Why do you just slough it off, become embarrassed for talking about Jesus, or really just, just don't do it because of the pressure of the world around you? In other words, obedience is not an option. We, again, we don't just come to church, receive the word and do nothing, but the blessing comes from being obedient to the promises of God. James 1.22 says again, be doers of the word and not hearers only. There's even divine discipline for not being obedient to what we know. Again, from the word of God, I know, listen, d divine discipline doesn't come from Satan. It comes from God. Divine discipline is not sickness, disease, the storms of life, but it comes from the word of God. And God compares it in Luke chapter 12 to physical punishment, even though as a Christian, you can sin, yet Satan can enter into your life when you sin. But divine discipline from the Lord never ever is God putting sickness on you. He will not do that, but he does come. And what he does is convict you. He, I mean, everywhere you turn, it's people talking to you about things you know you should be doing. You go to church hoping you're here another sermon and the pastor preaches at you for a good 20 minutes out of his sermon. And you know, you go somewhere, you go to work and somebody pops out of the woodwork you didn't know as a Christian starts to talk to you and you feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. That is the discipline of the Lord. Luke chapter 12, verse 47 and 48, the servant who knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, nor did according to his will, will be beaten with many stripes. Now the stripes that God gives us, again, is his uh, word of God. God, is the conviction of the word of God. Everywhere you turn, you hear from him. In other words, there is a mental anguish to being out of God's will. But he who, do, who, but he who knows not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. It's better that you didn't know the will of God as a Christian than if you do know the will of God and don't do it. It says, he'll be beaten with few stripes for to whomever much is given of him is much required and to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. Second Timothy chapter three and verse seven says this, you know, perhaps the missing part of your spiritual growth is obedience. You wonder why you're not growing much, but you really aren't being obedient to what you know. Why should the Lord give you more if you're not being obedient with what you have? Second Timothy 3, 7 says they are ever learning, but never able to come to the full knowledge of the truth. What a sad thing. There's people that come to church all the time. There's people that, go, that actually listen to the word of God in the car, or they listen to Christian music, or listen to a radio broadcast. They hear all these things and nod, and they just keep filling themselves up and filling themselves up with the word of God. Again, after pastoring 33 years, I saw it so often. People are coming week after week after week, and they can honestly quote scripture, do all these things, but they weren't really living for the Lord, nor did they ever witness. They never talked to anybody about Jesus. And oftentimes, it's not something you have to do. It turns in the conversation where people actually tell you they're looking for something to meet the needs of their life, and you shut your mouth and don't tell them about Jesus. Uh, there's times I've been in, in line, especially Walmart, but I'm standing there and, the, and I'll see the, the lady checking me out. And there's been two or three times I've just noticed something wasn't right. I mean, she was not happy. They're all supposed to be happy. I mean, were they, you know, paste of, of you know, grin on their face or not. But I could tell she wasn't happy. Ask her a question. In one case, the lady said, my daughter's really sick. And I mean, I took just a moment right there and prayed and said, Jesus will meet this need. And Jesus, I believe in healing. And the lady just smiled and thanked me for it when I left. You know what? I sowed a seed in her case. Didn't have a long time to talk to her, had other people in line, but I took that moment to share Jesus because you know what? It doesn't take a long time to do it. That's simply being obedient to what God asks you to do. Obedience is not something that should be burdensome. It should be joyful toward God. Again, ever learning. Boy, how many Christians are in that category? Always learning, but never able to come to the full knowledge of the truth. What brings you to the full knowledge of the truth? Being obedient to God's plan. God's pattern for spiritual growth comes from the word of God. Let's take it and break it down. The first thing is study of the word of God. 
That's the first thing he commands to us. In John chapter eight, to those Jews that just believed in him, he said this, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth, the truth will make you free. This comes from personal study. I mean, this is more than just hearing it in church and closing your Bible and closing your notebook and not reopening it until the next week or even two weeks later. No, it comes from personal study every day. I compare going to church like eating out. What a wonderful thing. Somebody else makes the food, somebody else repairs it, but personal study at home is you eating at home. You actually put it together yourself. You bring out something from the pastor said something, you put some new things together with it, you study it, you pray over it, and you get things for yourself. The next thing is the church services. Okay, and uh, whether you attend once or twice or three times a week or how, how often you do, it is important. You say, well, yeah, but three times is a lot. Did you know they went to church in the book of Acts six days a week and took one day off? They met daily in the temple and they took the Sabbath day off. So church services, the third way is recordings and books and radio, all the different other ways that we can get it. You know, uh, iPods or part, you know, just studying the word of God, uh, whatever. Anyway, personal study, church services, and recordings, books, radio. These are things we receive the word of God. And then finally is meditating on what we have just studied. In fact, in the book of Psalms, it's brought out that when we meditate on the word of God, then we become great in the kingdom of God. The word possessing your thoughts brings revelation. This is what meditating on the word of God does. I like to do this, is there's a passage I might be looking at, but I'll just meditate on, it might be a day or two just thinking about it and thinking about it, letting it roll over in me. And after a while, it's one of those things you can't forget. It's not like you even have to try to bring it up. You just stop for a moment, get quiet, that verse comes right back to you. And the Holy Spirit wants to take something out of that. And often it may be a phrase or it might be just one word. And that one word can change your life completely. The word possessing your thoughts brings revelation. This is the light of the Holy Spirit, which turns the written word into revelation, into understanding, and then makes it personal for you. Joshua chapter one, verses seven and eight, talks about the importance of being obedient to the word of God. And here it says in verse seven and eight, and here is Moses speaking to Joshua from the voice of the Lord, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law. You see, Joshua knew a lot of the word of God, but he never had had a chance to really put it into work as far as the whole nation was concerned. He put it to work under Moses, proved himself under Moses, and this was the open door for him to take over the entire nation and lead them out of the wilderness into the promised land. Again, verse seven and eight, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded you, turn not from it, that's the word of God, to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law will not depart out of your mouth, but will me- but you'll meditate on it day and night. In other words, the moment you read it, don't just let it come out of your mouth. Meditate on it before you speak it. Meditate on it day and night that you may watch over it to do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. You want your Christian life to prosper even more? You want to have better success than you've even been having right now? Start meditating on the word of God. Then start uh, to let it become revelation to you. Then start acting on it in your daily life. This where again, this is what it comes back to again. This is not just good works in front of people. This is obedience before God. This is what you want God to see is the fact that out of my love toward you and my love toward the word of God, my admonition to the voice of the Holy Spirit, I want to start meditating, thinking on the word of God. Psalm 1 verses 1 through 3 says this, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. We're getting back to obedience. You do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. There's so much ungodliness in our nation today, so much ungodliness in the world today that everybody's trying to turn you away from the word of God and so many Christians are trying to appease them. Stop trying to appease them. I'm not saying you need to be mean about it, but there comes a kind, no, I'm not going to obey that. That is contrary to the word of God. I would rather 
you be upset with me than to have God upset with me. It says, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. A person who is disobedient to God actually stands in the way of sinners. They end up sitting in the seat of the scornful and they look down on other people. God doesn't want us to be scorners. It says in verse two, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. This is the word of God. And in his law, notice this, he meditates day and night. The first part of becoming a doer of the word of God is to take the word and think about it. Let it roll around on the inside of you. In fact, one person said that that word can be translated like a cow chewing on a cud is that you begin to ruminate on it and it comes back up and you and you chew it up and chew it up. You swallow it, you bring it back up, you chew it and chew it to where all of a sudden you get something out of that that you didn't see before. It says in verse three, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that brings forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does will prosper so it comes back to this, the importance of meditating on the word of God, then acting on it. Obedience is part of our love for God. Deuteronomy chapter six and verse five says, you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your might. You know what might is? Doing it. God says to do it. First John 5, three, this is God's love that we keep his commandments. So this is what God is asking of us. And even grace is part of our service for the Lord. God has provided everything we need to accomplish his will. Hebrews chapter eight and verse 10, I will put my laws in their mind. This is where we start off and then write them in their hearts. This is where we meditate on it and becomes revelation. I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. God wants a unique people, zealous of good works, Titus chapter two and verse 14. The gospel is to be preached and then made known to all men for the obedience of faith, Romans chapter 16. Let's just talk very quickly about the results of obedience. What are they? First of all, godliness is profitable in every area of life. This is obedience, 1 Timothy 4, 8. Second, by obedience, we purify our souls, our thinking. This is 1 Peter 1, 21. Obedience causes us to purify our souls. The third thing is now we can hear the voice of God even clearer. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 22. Number four, we receive revelation of who Jesus Christ really is, not only in heaven, but also in our life. John 14 and verse 21. We find paths of pleasantness and of peace. Proverbs chapter three and verse 17, all by simple, a result of being obedient. And finally, the last thing in Psalm 19 and verse 11, we receive a great reward here in life, but also in eternity. Oh, the importance of obedience, walking in obedience to God. So with all this in mind, what am I telling you? Simply take the word of God, become obedient to it. There's so many great rewards in it. This causes you to grow, to mature, to become a blessing to others around you, as well as to yourself, but also, most of all, pleasing to God. Actually have God say over us like he did to Jesus, this is Bob, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. What a great thing. You know why he's pleased? Because we're obedient to do the word of God. Tomorrow we'll take up and finish this series. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Ministers, you can access valuable resources free at ministersclub.com. You'll find topical studies, sermon outlines, PDF books, answers to many questions, and plenty of encouragement, all free. Just go to ministersclub.com. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.